Um, I want to start actually not just directly from the challenge walkthrough, but uh, normally on Mondays, I would like us to start with presentation, presenting the one from before, like from the previous week. So given that uh, this one was an extended week and you had, I'm sure, like some of you worked on it or because the challenge, also the current challenge is uh, already was given to you like last week um, and that you had time to look at so but just you know from so that we can conclude the work from last week or the week before let's have a few people who could be willing to present i know this is just on my spot on um but you had or also some of you had already slides so if you want to just do a quick just three minutes not more than three minutes presentation uh, that that presentation could be like you can just open your gits uh, folder you can walk through what you did just you know in this folder i have done this i've done that i've implemented that i arrived to this point and this was challenging you know much more of a very quick uh presenting what you have done it's like so i will start like i'm gonna take three now so I will, you know, if anyone is willing just to go through that to explain just a three minute presentation of what they did either through this, from their slide, from their coach, from their GitHub, anywhere, um, just by sharing slide. So is there anyone willing to talk about their work from week two? Otherwise, I'm going to call, and I know that uh... okay. So you else a guy? Could you present just your you know talk about what you did, and if you can share your. your Rather to your GitHub and just walk us through. And I think the one aspect is if you can't, you have to tell me that you can't either by writing or by unmuting. And definitely, you know, this is very you know almost always just when someone calls your name that like if you're not there okay you're not there but if you are there and if you are not there it means like something i don't know maybe just in short probably you went for you know you're disconnected which normally doesn't happen but if you are there just if your mic doesn't work just text so Okay, okay, well, thanks. Um, Abdul Hamid, Abdul Hamid, could you? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, Abdul. Um, really understand what the question was. Can you please repeat? Yeah, no worries. Um, so, just more to talk for three minutes, not more than three minutes, on what you have done last week or on, on week two project so you could just open your github and just say like okay i have done that i, I was able to manage to complete this part of that part if you have a, a notebook you can do the same from the notebook or if you have, if you prefer it from a slide you can do it from slide okay one second so should i be sharing my screen or that would be great yeah yeah, I think I, I prefer just everyone shares the screen for for this type of course. Yeah. All right. So I will just show the article I wrote on Medium about the um, projects that I did on well, week two. So I'm sharing one second. Can you see my screen? Yes, 
we do. So this is the medium article I wrote for the week two project. So I, I went through what the project was about for week two uh, and what the different tools I was introduced to during the week. Um, so I first, I uh, linked the data in which the traffic analysis and so that my readers could find the data. And I also uh, described what uh, some of the columns in the data meant before I went on and started the pre-processing stage. So on the pre-processing stage, I uh, did some EDA on the data set. So that I loaded the data into a pandas data frame and I also cleaned the data to remove any null values there due to the drones not working at some time intervals. And um, then I also did some uh, graphical, uh, graphical display so that my readers could understand what kind of data was there in the data uh, set. Here, I did the number of vehicle types in the data set, the total travel distance by each vehicle type. Here we can see um, cars did the uh, most travel distance. And also here, the average speed by vehicle type. So uh, motorcycles were indeed uh, a bit faster for the average speed. So then I did uh, transformations using dbt. So I was introduced to this tool first. So dbts are just a SQL files that have select statements in them. And then we can do some transformations based on that. So here um, we can see that uh, we have a count, uh, we have a track ID, travel distance, and average speed, and uh, we did some aggregations on those um, uh, on those columns, and we did some transformations. Then we selected all from this um, transformer table. Then uh, we uh, this is the documentation that was produced by the DBT tool. Finally, I did uh, the scheduling and orchestrating using the Airflow. This is also a new tool that I was introduced to last week. So I built some docs that um, will do the extra CSV file, also load the data, and, and, and then perform the DBT transformations. So some of the challenges I faced during working on this project was uh, installing using Docker. Since I didn't have that much experience using Docker, I um, faced challenge. And the conclusion was, I was introduced to a lot of a new uh, to a new world of data engineering tools. I have tried my best to use them and create a data pipeline that will serve as a foundation for future future projects I will encounter. So I also linked it to GitHub uh, repo here. So this was what I did for week two. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Abdulami. That's exactly the type of presentation I want. Just quick, but uh, with overview. And anyone can do exactly that. So from this week on, from next week on, Monday will be dedicated for that, where everybody present just for, and you can prepare slides and anything, you know, your blog, you can, uh, but also you can show course. I think in, I especially like also that you would show course um, next time. So not for today, but thank you so much, Abdulami. That was excellent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good morning, Gabby. Hi, and everyone, uh, let me just share. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I think I'm lost in the CICD uh thing i mean the um, a github uh yeah so the the, the first in the during the uh, first submission uh, i submitted uh the github repo uh which doesn't have much uh that was the first submission which incorporates both airflow and the uh, dvt 
so the final submission wasn't successful. I don't know why. Maybe it was the gitignore uh, thing. So when I did the second submission, it only took the airflow. Uh, I don't know why that happened. What, 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 what do you mean by submission? I think I don't understand the submission. The the final mm -hmm. submission during the final submission. Uh, I mean, only when, when I only finish. require. There must be only one GitHub repository where you have every work for the week. Otherwise, we don't grade it. We only yeah, grade that, one. Okay. Yeah, that that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, w when I push to the Git repo, it only gives me the the. Uh, airflow folder, n not the, the the DVT folder. So there there was a problem there. Uh, I was also try to, I mean, uh, include the. So this means you created a new, you know. So what it just shows is that yes, you created. Yes. It only says one commit. So one yes. commit means only just one time. So that means you have you have deleted and then you have created new but even if you're deleted of course you can go to your history and you can find it but it seems to me like like yeah it's uh there isn't any submission or there isn't any commit in between yeah. and commits must be done every every you know we look at one of the aspects we look at people to grade their work whether it's their their work or not is also by looking at how how much and what they commit so you have yeah, to know exactly. If you just only commit one, you we're not mm. you're gonna get basically from our perspective, you haven't gained anything. Because exactly. anyone can commit, you know, any one yeah. time. So yeah. just just to give you the hint. Okay. Yeah, I, I do understand that. I, I need to do that now and then, uh, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> that that's the problem. Um I'm not getting all this uh, CID C D uh, I think there should not be CICD no. here. So CICD here it just should be Git commit, right? So once you yeah. create, once you create your Git repository, all that has to be done is just you basically whatever you want you exclude it using Git ignore and whatever you add you just Git add, Git commit and Git pull, uh, Git push, and then if that's it because it's an individual project. This week there's going to be a group work. So in the group work you all have to create maybe one a repository that is new that means it's yeah. a group repository and then everybody has to commit but has to also get pulled from that so that they know you know they work on the latest one and so in part there is no cicd you know like this is just a continuous integration mm -hmm. so just the ci part only there's no cd which is the continuous deployment mm -hmm. so in principle i think you should check your computer why that happens I mean, it's the most rare case i mean i don't know what um so if you are com if you are committing or adding using some non standard not uh, terminal whatever make sure that you understand that part because if it's okay. from terminal then it should be very straightforward the three line command that just mm -hmm. is git add git commit and git push so in mm -hmm. principle um yeah um Maybe in Git ignore check if, if you have, but even even if you add it once, it still will be there. Even if you add it in Git ignore, so okay, yeah. Uh, uh, so the, the 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 link for the final submission also, I wasn't able to uh, put the link in Tenex, so I just put it here. Uh, the uh, report or the and, and and another aspect actually for that one that's not a published uh, URL the medium, so that's something that we cannot. I mean, we can see it by. There must be probably a place where you have to publish it so that you don't get just only the CE blah, CEA type of code, mm -hmm. um, you know that part. But it actually gets your title. So right now for example we will be we were unable to automatically get the content and all that so just also make sure that you publish actually your article so that it is it has a proper url just like if you if you go to any medium url for example if you look at abdullah abdurrahman's abdurrahman's url then you see like 
the art, you know, the medium.com, then his username, then the title, and then the basically the index, just the hash part. So, but okay. yours is different because you didn't publish it. Like you only put the edit, you know, like your private okay. version. Of course, okay. one can see it, but not. Um, so, I think go on. Okay, but this is for right. everyone. I just because that was the the most strictest part we had. Like we we cannot we cannot get it. We cannot parse uh, that URL. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to say one last thing. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm wasting most of my time in uh, integrating those tech stacks. Almost more than 80% of the time I'm struggling to get those tech stack together. Even I uh, read about the, the challenge and still that that's not clear maybe i'll I will ask later yeah yeah My but that, that's screen. that's expected no. that's yeah. expected so you are engineer engineer means like in this sense you are being machine learning engineer data engineering it is about the tech stack you probably will spend sometimes 99 percent of the time figuring out something so it's expected right. it's fine you have to get used to it tomorrow must be better than yesterday so that's the only rule there is but it's not about much more than knowing how to fa code fast, how to really integrate um, different tech stacks, and then how to write automations as well. And then on top of that, just learn other aspects that, you know, statistical, mathematical, and, and all aspects. But there isn't any more. It's all about figuring out that and coding advanced. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay, Mubarak. Oh, can you hear him? Yes, we can. Uh, I think we finish here my GitHub. Great. Okay. I think you can see my screen. Yes, we do. Uh, I have uh, two uh, GitHub reports because uh, for the first time, uh, which one is the first? I think this one uh, is my first uh, repo. Uh, while working on this repo, uh, I faced uh, connection refused uh, between Airflow and uh, PostgreSQL. I tried to figure out why uh, this happened. Uh, I tried hard and make uh, the containers to the same network and try different things, but it didn't work. Finally, uh, from a suggestion uh, from a friend, uh, I recommended to Astro CLI. Uh, then I start to build a fresh project using Astro CLI uh, and try to do the project using this. So in my GitHub repo, this and one for the final submission. But unfortunately, uh, after using, you are following me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. There's a thing, but we can hear you, yeah. Yeah, uh, after using Astro CLI, uh, when it comes to the DBT, uh, I, face, I face another problem, uh, which is uh, I couldn't find the Cosmos module uh, after installing it, even uh, so I can't uh, finish the project uh, on the deadline. So uh, on the break time, uh, I give time and review old repo, this one, to figure out why it is not working. 
so I might uh, tackle the condition review problem. Then installing uh, DBT uh, uh, and Redash, I finished the project. Uh, and now the old one is uh, fully working before one. Yeah. So, okay. That, that then, was great. Mm, yeah. Uh, here are the, the screenshots, and I think explaining them will be good. So, the first one, the airflow screenshot. Uh, here, you can, as you can see, I tried very hard because it is almost like uh, I have 47 field results and eight successful results to the data. Uh, this DAG, uh, what this DAG do is, uh, it puts the data to the Postgres database using uh, DAG. Uh, the DAG uh, gets the data from uh, a CSV file that is refined and uh, cleaned by using a Python script. So. It loads data. After loading the data, use DBT to transform it. And uh, here is how what it looks after cleaning the data. Um, I have uh, split it into informations: the trajectory and vehicle uh positive information after that i transform it and uh, as you see from here uh, this is from uh, a dbt documentation uh, here are my transformed tables or schemas what i have and yeah here is uh, the documentation dbt documentation uh, after that th there is uh, an uh, screenshot and there is a reader screenshot Uh, here is the, the position of the uh, vehicle. As you can see, uh, the first line is its uh, altitude and latitude. Then it is track ID. Uh, I created this point sequence to add the database, nothing related to the data. Uh, and the time and type, it is car, uh, motorcycle, or something. And these whole points. Uh, show us the this car's movement track id 55 and we can do same for all uh, what we have on our database and this uh, this is for uh, the type there total distance and average for cart, for example, uh, the total distance is here and the average for the car, and we can see for motorcycle, taxi, and bus as well. And this is uh, a very speed division uh, between uh, uh, each category or type uh, for the bus average speed deviation is 8.1415 uh, and like and we can see for all uh, uh, for all vehicle types we have mm. and uh, these are the screenshots i think it's enough for the show excellent 
really good uh, Mubarak. And, and another thing that I like, and this is something very, 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 very important for uh, most people don't get it, that the digital, it's, it's you know, whenever you, you think of uh, digital skill, it means most people think it's programming or something. No, digital skill means how you operate just simple things like you open a website and you know where do you go and check and move you know how do you just when you are in a meeting you know whether you are just muting some yourself very fast or not whether you can respond quickly or figure out just the, you know the current technology and what i liked about you is that you didn't take time in those movements even if that digital skill is so important for people who are going to be interviewing you so and this is for everyone really 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 know these things like if basically you you know tons of programming but you don't know how to operate your window normally people just will have like a feeling that you're not full right you're not a full package so it was excellent you know i think every one of you like who presented today you really did good like you were very comfortable and that's very important just showing that you know that seamlessness that you know to go and to show us you didn't take that much time right so that was very good and and thank you so much for every, you know the three of you like uh, Mubarak Abdulhamid and Yaya and I think from here on uh, everyone will present I mean at least five uh, or five to eight people will present on Mondays so prepare yourself like for example for next week as well um, but that was excellent thank you okay so now we can go back to this week's challenge um and can someone help me summarize what they understand and i'm sure you probably are working on it already but you know anyone who can help us explain what is the ask in the in, in how they understand it I mean, think of me as an employer. I mean, really, I am in part nowadays. And what matters is who is really proactive, like Mubarak, like Abdulhamid, like Yaya. So in a way, you know, make sure you are visible. Like on all of, in every employment, what happens is that the visibles will get, you know, whatever. So I'm just more making it very clear that that is how really in real life it works. So, yep, RG. I don't know what the name uh, you can tell us your name, but RG, yeah. Please call. It's ready. I was saying it is. Okay. It's ready. I'm going okay. to do that. Okay. Uh, so, so this week, what we're supposed to do is, we're going to have or prepare a platform that or a chatbot on the re -dash, uh, dashboard. We're going to add a chatbot that will accept a question or a query from uh, ten academy trainees or a, I don't know maybe anyone, and we're going that person will have, will get its answer. So that is the idea. So what we're supposed to do is we will prepare first the chatbot on the re -dash, uh, on the, on, on the redash part or on the front end side, we will add a chatbot using maybe React or the, uh, with the, the, the JavaScript framework, or, and we're going to prepare a database that that is going to accept uh, maybe it says YouTube. The, we will prepare a data a, a SQL schema or the, our database schema that is appropriate to accept the YouTube data. And on, in the meanwhile, we will prepare the we will do with large language models uh, in order to convert the equations or the language that the people are ask, asking from the English language to the data query uh, for the for our data or for our SQL to understand the question. Uh, and throughout this, we're going to cover the front end part and the back end part and uh, the open AI, the open AI part in order to convert the um, instructions to the to a question or to a query. Uh, that's what I understand. From Excellent. This I mean, it's really, I mean, you know, that, that was exactly, that's good. Thank you, Radit. Um, and what, 
from what you saw, like what are the things that you think are going to be difficult or challenging or something that is, you know, um, that you think will be difficult or, you know, mm. what's your expectation uh, of the, your, your, your work for this week? Okay, um, I think your first first of all, like as everyone is saying, setting up the environment is one of the difficult tasks, and uh, as it was being said before. And after that, I like understanding how to connect the Redash APIs to the front end and to the back end part is the main part of the assignment, I think. So after we, like you, uh, there are there are so many guides, you know, you know how to do the open AI part and also how to prepare the database uh, so like what we need to figure out is how to connect the redash with the react part for the front end and with the open AI and the data like uh, our post maybe our sql part or the database part for the back end and if we can figure out this i think we can we, uh, we can do the other things yeah excellent yeah uh, actually that's the point and that's for that reason we also provided uh, i think to this afternoon that uh, Ramet will uh, explain so there's already a code shared right so a starter code that does exactly just the part that hacks it like that hacks so it's about reading the redash uh, source code so you, now you have to read the source code like there's no even we didn't ask you because without reading the redash source code you probably won't but just also to simplify we have also added the part now there is just the front end part that you will hack just in that part is the starter is there you, you will improve it and the back end part is just you build it with some uh, api and basically from the front end you can connect now the query part the running the query part of course redash does it um pass it to a salary that is basically an asynchronous computing like basically a, a worker when you install redash you'll always see there's a worker and then the scheduler and the um, server. The server is basically what you see. And uh, the scheduler does basically the scheduling of the, you know, the queries when to run, how to run, where to run. And then the, basically the, the worker basically from executes the SQL. So now the part that you do is like receiving the user text is from the front end. That is just, again, as we say, as I said, there is going to be a starter code and then there's going to be that one you send it to the um, LLM so that you get an SQL query, a verified SQL query. And that one is a back end front end thing. So it's still you are going to build it. So it's not that difficult. Then the, the third component that you are going to be then working more is how do you call the worker to execute the query and then render as well. So I think that part is um, uh, I think we shared, uh, Remit, I think people can, I mean, we can, it, it is, it should be shared or it should be in the Google folder. If it's not in the Google folder, maybe it's not shared. So we'll share it right now. Like Rodas will share right now. So, but yeah, Brahan, it will be there. So Reddit, yeah, it's a, so the, that's why we make it also a group work. So you all have to figure out, you cannot finish it if you're just the only one or if, if the one person only doing it because it's a lot of component to figure out so one has to everybody should understand what everyone is doing but one should focus more on the back end building you know that the llm integration part of it and the other part is um kind of figuring out how to run a query given that we have no query just let's imagine just we have the query you know it's translated and how do we make it run from the code so normally we know we can just query it and then it does that for us like but so figure out the other one and then you all then put together so in part um yeah it should be does that does that make sense okay yeah yeah it okay. makes sense thank yeah. you you're welcome and great and another anyone else i think i would like more hands more you know don't don't get hidden like you know remember as i think is really red eight for example now i will not forget right so it's just basically and now not only me but anywhere else the attitude is the same so when we say in ten academy we are not you know in three months we can't give you too much you know knowledge we can't do much but we can only we can do one thing very well 
change your mindset by showing you every week what success is, as well as by yourself proving again and again how much capable you are, we think you will change the mindset. But for that mindset change to come, you need to be responding. That means you need to be fighting to talk. You need to, for every opportunity you get, it's not about, you know, job is job. We know that's the whole thing uh, in Ten Academy. But more than that, it's really a way of living life as well. It's like, if something you don't, you agree, why don't you just actually execute it? So in this case, I would really want everyone to be very proactive, even if they don't know, we don't demand that you know, because that's another thing. We, want, we demand only just at least you try, right? So, and that part show us over and over and over, like all the time when you get the opportunity, raise your hands, reflect, so that it is easier for everyone. So, but thank you, Radit, and who else? Um, who else is next? Brahan, go on. Okay, hello everyone again. Um, my okay. question is like, uh, on the data, it says to take the time series data of the, let's say the videos or the, and also the video production thing. Like, and first my question is like, when we try to design a schema for it, like, do we have to store the time series in every time, let's say the, let's say the likes or the dislikes or the number of uh, misses in comments, let's say. Mm -hmm. So do we have to track that time series data over time or should we just have, uh, should we just take it one time and then that's all? Like, and then- I mean, I mean, I think so, like just answering while there, I think, so focus less now, I mean, it's the time series component of it is usually means that even the transcripted version of it is that when we talk now, I mean, it's a time series, right? You talk and then I talk and then uh, next is, to, so there is a timestamp. Now in timestamp, sometimes a lot of people react or the, the, the speed of our communication can go up or down, right? So that's a time series component of it. So for now, though, like for this project, you know, even if it's, we want to give you the flavor of also that in real world like this, now we are entering this multimodal things, video, audio, text, you know, and uh, animations and emojis and in all of it. So of course, one, one person from your team should be focused while you guys discuss once, you know, so that you all get the same knowledge, but one prepares the data, you know, queries the data, but it is not the focus will, should not be about, and this, you know, let's say the focus should not be about the data because the most important focus for now is reading the uh, source code, uh, read source code, hacking the source code, contributing an add-on, and then that add-on actually does something that is expected. So even if the table, you know, let's imagine your table currently is that uh, there are, uh, you know, the kind of texts that are there, you can consider them like info, like all of the videos contributing to a text, you know, and then the, the views, the number of views would act for you as a selection criteria, but all the text, let's imagine is your source, right? So now you, if someone queries like, um, you know, what, like show me like the videos that I, that are liked most, or show me the videos where there are more number of, um, let's say people, like if, if that is already included in the transcription, because you can count the number of people that are in that transcription. Then you should be able to query now, there is a table for that, you probably data prepared it, then you should be able to then, from that natural language, the English language, to uh, an SQL query and execute the SQL query. And then probably the person asked you to show, to show you like in a histogram or in a line or in a, some, you choose some form of one, one form of, let's say visualization. For now, the most important part, at least choose one, Almost always you can choose like um, histogram, for example, it doesn't matter. But then create the visualizations and show them if you can. Now, so the, you know, the component, we know the co how the project is complex, right? So the most important part is to show each part of it that you have integrated the, the chatbot, the chatbot receives a question, the chatbot communicates to the bucket, gets the, you know, the right SQL part, 
you know, verified SQL because you have a table to query uh, that SQL against. So now you then execute uh, an SQL just on the executor, like on the worker, and then you receive a data, but that data is saved as, you know, Redash saves it, what is called queries are almost always saved into then visualizations, right? So then you have, you selected one visualization, normally one visualization is called table. Table is also one visualization. But the next visualization is to take that one, again, determine from using LLA maybe which visualization to do in that data, and then basically do the visualization. Now, that part of end-to-end -end is the most important part. Even if the data is, um, you know, the data preparation may not be very, you know, very detailed. But of course, you are three, you can be more ambitious, right? So does that, does that make sense, Brian? Yes, it makes perfect sense. Okay. okay, go on. Sorry, I stopped you also earlier. Just wanted to make it very clear where the focus is. So now, what is your understanding then? Like, is it, what do you expect? The challenge, the, or so, anything else? So uh, let me go over what I get to understand uh, from this or from the whole week's um, challenge. Like first we get to understand those uh, GPT concepts and LLM concepts also. And then afterwards try to extract the YouTube uh, data and then store it into some database into some format that we need for our analysis and for our visualizations. So after extracting those data and storing into the database, and then afterwards we try to connect uh, that database with the redash redash, and then do some default dashboard designs, and then some something to show. And then afterwards to move move forward to the backend, and then the using LLM, which is long chain, and then try to build um, those integrations with the chatbot, and then build that. API, which means like taking queries from the user and connect it with the database and then processing that and giving an output and then make that an API. So if we make that API, afterwards we move to the React and create some add-on chatbot. And then we create that separate chatbot and after creating that React and integrating it with a backend API and make, and then finally make integration with React with a, a Redash right and then integrating that and also integrating how to visualize the output came from uh, that chatbot add-on to the redash dashboard am i right uh, so so there are certain, like certain parts that that doesn't that may not be right and that's why it's okay. very important you know today everybody in your team you meet regularly like i don't know n number of times today to discuss and make sure that you understand the flow. So that means you have to produce your flow, so kind of like how can, things would go. Can you correct me what I missed? Yes, I, yes exactly. I, I will correct. I will say some of the things that are slightly. So the first. So just first is like yeah. So that flow part is very important. So that you all are because it's a group work. So the part that you have to understand about Redash is that Redash, whether it's a query or a visualization or a dashboard, it's all a YAML file that Redash stores, right? So even um, if you open, if you just uh, look at inside Redash, so I will share also, I think there will be a tutorial where we show you like how to, for example, for Git version, Redash, everything, you know, you can just basically, um, your dashboards are just a YAML file. So that's, that's very easy, right? So now the component that, that here, when you say like uh, the 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 backend, the backend doesn't do the backend. All it does is takes. So there is called a prompt, right? So the prompt, and then the system message, and and the number of things here. So that part is about describing. You describe for LLM what your tables are. What you know. So that's when you read, you will understand. So all you have to do, you don't actually, the backend doesn't do any query. Like it doesn't do anything, doesn't connect, let's say with, um, it can, but it, it, it doesn't, it's not necessary. It, it, there's no data from your database that goes to um, the LLM. 
all it does is basically gets the table structure. So of course, the backend can query with with the back uh, with the database saying, you know, what kind of tables are there, and what are the the columns uh, uh, in each table. So you get basically a schema, the schema of your database, right? Now that that schema is what is needed because that schema is a text. So that schema is what is needed for the LLM to determine what to do, how to query, right? So I have shared uh, the references, the key references. If you read the first reference, is about how it actually is done. So this that part of it, how this you know, it's a very step by step how it's that done. So the key references or task one, you must come, you know, at least a few references. You really should read it because that part is very well described there. So that means the back end all it does is gets the schema communicates with llm and gets also of course um, receives a message a user query from um, from the front end from the chatbot and then integrates and then generates an sql query right so now of course in principle instead of the sql query you can i mean you have to generate a sql query but then together you can also generate um the visualization, the YAML files that are required for the visualization as well as for the dashboard. So, and then you create that structure inside Redash's base, right? And that would give you, the user basically will be able to access those visualizations afterwards. But in the chatbot, you can also give them a link to go to the dashboard, for example, if you create dashboard, if it is a visualization, you can show it already in the in the chatbot, just the, the graph. And then also the, for example, if they are requiring the insight, you in the insight, if you don't need actually to, you know, you don't need to show them even a SQL query. If it's insight, you analyze and you say, what does this graph do? Or what does this data tell us, you know, this relationship? The LLM already gives you some a summary of that insight, and then you show the, the insight. So what I am earlier, what I what you were when you were saying the SQL query happens actually within once it comes to Redash, like the chatbot should be should have now two places. One is it's sending it to the executor, to the worker, and once it receives uh, uh, SQL, the other part is from natural language to translate from natural language to SQL. It sends it to the LLM or the backend. Does that does that make sense, Rahan? still i missed you a little bit like um if so if, if it's gonna return if we're gonna do the visualization before the redash or like we give it to the x i don't, I don't get your real yeah so i think i think that that part of visualization is a very you have to understand what redash visualization is redash has a SQL query connected with a visualization and that visualization is just a yaml file that describes what is X, what is Y, whatever, and then put in certain way. So you can generate it. So, and but the SQL, the data, you have to query to get the data, right? So that for that one, you need an executor. So that means you have to be able to send to the, like to the, to the worker to fetch the data, basically. While the backend, whenever we, we think of the backend, in this case, the chatbot backend, it is a translator, it translates the natural language to an SQL against a database schema. So I think it will get clearer. So let's let's move on. But I hope that is something. But this is you know, it's a Tuesday. It should get clearer as we go. Yeah, I get a little bit of it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Fanuel and Gerard. Fanuel. Uh, hi everyone. Hi everybody. Hi. Uh, so. Is it, it's like a question and uh, also what I understand from what you said. So I'm guessing it's a two-parter, like one, uh, it takes natural language and uh, I don't know, reads already created visualizations and explains them. And the other yes. is like creates a visualization from the natural language that we give it, like uh, let's say, give me some reports about this data. and they will translate that into a SQL and we can see visualization uh, at the end, right? Absolutely. So it's, just, it's sort of a, yeah, a two, two components, exactly. So if you think of it, 
if you are using VS Code uh, chats, that has the same similar thing, right? A VS Code chats that you can actually explain the code, or you can actually, it can suggest a code for you, it can generate, right? And it can be available everywhere in your code. So that is the dream, like for Rigash, that you, you are creating the VS Code chat type. So it, it has okay. that two components. Exactly. Sorry for interrupting you. Can I add no, no. one more uh, yes, question? Please go. So I was looking at uh, LangChain, yeah. and it has a feature like memory, like yeah. it can remember what you asked you. So can we do something like we can ask it to visualize something, then after we can ask it to explain the visualization, the sort of something like that? I think the uh, memory. Is a memory. Yeah. So the memory normally in uh, in um, large language models, it means uh, how do you pass whenever you have a long document that doesn't fit in your context? How do you pass because you have to break it, and how do you pass that memory? It it is more of let's imagine that you have a really huge document, right? And how do you pass from one call to another the memory? That means memory means context, right? So the learning that how do you transfer? So normally in, the, in your case currently, may not, you know, it's much more you may not deal with that because you are generating code or you are generating SQL or you are explaining graph. So even if it's like the graph, so you can ask, you can describe for example, your visualization, as I, as I told you, your visualization, whenever you see it, it, lo it looks graph. But actually, in the back, you know, um, for Redash, a visualization is just another YAML file that describes what the graph is, right? So because of that, you can actually, actually LLM can understand that text. So you don't, you don't need to do kind of, let's call it like image analysis. It's basically the image already is described in the YAML file that describes the visualization. So you can actually ask it, okay, you know, here is my schema, here is uh, a query, and here is a visualization, and tell me, and the user asks this one, uh, explain to them. So this is basically called prompt engineering. So you are in engineering some prompt that fits all of it, and then the LLM from that will, will answer for you, okay, you know, this visualization is about this and that data, and it shows this and that, and therefore it, it explains it for you that way. So, because everything is a text file, you know, basically just a YAML is a text file. Does that make sense, Fanuel? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I understood. Like, you can use it as an input also, right? The YAML file. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is an input. Yeah, okay. you can generate it as well as also you can use it as an input. Exactly. So, yeah, but for your question of memory, unless you 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 need more context, you know, or to fit bigger context, let's say if the YAML file is very big, yes, you will probably need to use memory so that, you know, because it's, it's called retrieval. When you retrieve, sometimes you cannot, you know, you retrieve a lot of information and that information may not fit in the large language models window size. In that case, you need to use memory to relate, for example, between, because then you have to break it into steps and between, to remember context or information between steps, you use memory. So it will get clearer. I know that for every one of you, this, this space is new, but it, all of this, what is memory, whatever, will get clearer. But I hope that's clear already. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Carol. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I got to go through the research file, the research paper done by the Microsoft research team. And I found it interesting. So the question I have uh, is when I was going through the research paper, uh, I saw uh, what I understood is that uh, we have to uh, create many tables that are uh, like, for, in, for instance, the YouTube data, zero data may be huge, but uh, maybe someone wants uh, to know the like, how many likes did, did I get on this day, or you know, the, you, yeah. the, you, the user uh, interaction or something like that. Yeah. So do we have to create uh, tables that are 
is responsible to for creating visual that, that, that would be absolutely that that would be something right that's exactly the point that's called in you know kind of solution how to get the right thing i don't know it as well don't don't think that we know whenever we give you challenge we are working on it you know that that means you you will be more advanced uh, by the end of this this week than me maybe so you know don't think that we have a solution we normally don't have a solution we work hard we all all we check is that is this interesting is this real life people are interested in this uh, part as well as also we check whether it's doable once we verify that we give you and then we work on it in the background as well so um but exactly those strategies would be useful so for example you know using lots of dbt transformations to do as we go on from from in the back end using a scheduler for example if there are many people are asking about a certain type of question maybe that from that you should create some new tables that will that will make it very easy to answer that so yeah by creating multiple things multiple tables on from which that the llm can have access you know on a transformed data it can answer better so yeah that's a good strategy okay so the other thing is um, the way i understood uh, prompt engineering uh, again from the research paper is just to guide the user the uh, the one who asks the chatbot uh, into like asking the right questions right uh, because we already have uh, created the tables we already have the dbt tables so we are we are just uh, we are using prompt engineering to just like guide the user into using those tables in the right way am i right or uh, no 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 i think prompt engineering is a ge very general term which basically actually it has nothing got to do with the user it has got to do from translating from the user to the llm to get the user the right answer so it has nothing got to it's, it's on the other side of the communication from the user you know so let's imagine your chatbot is in the middle the user is now uh, there accessing it and then you have to interface to llm so of course when i think of like the chatbot i'm thinking of both the back end part of it the and the front end part of it just that component now the the prompt is actually you write such that you get you the llm answers the right data right so in the process it means the there, there should be a prompt that summarizes maybe the question into the right format so exactly what you said but it's not for the user but you must rephrase the question to a new question that's useful second component from that question you extract the right data that's called retrieval then from uh, that's again there is a prompt there and then from that there is another prompt that takes this context it's called context or information it takes this context and the user rephrased query and then sends to the llm to answer you know to give the right answer so that's also another Prompt. So a prompt is everywhere. Whenever you are translating something using LLM, whatever you write to the LLM is called prompt. If you are just passing the exactly the user query as it is to the LLM, then you didn't add any, I mean, that's still a prompt, but a prompt that you haven't, you know, normally that doesn't work. So it's basically facilitating, you know, the prompt is basically facilitates like a vehicle, facilitates um from the user query to the answer um and it adds certain descriptions and what it is what how it should be done and all that so that's called the prompt does that make sense yeah it does it does thank you uh can i ask one more quick, quick question? yes go i know i'm taking up more time so i think uh, no one is no one has raised the hand so you have you can take as long time as you want okay 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 Thank you. So the last question I have is uh, some uh, some quick questions may be asked by the user. Some are uh, which are vague in that yeah. measure. For example, uh, someone may ask, uh, tell me something interesting about this video or something yeah. like that. So uh, when we are faced with this uh, ty type of uh, situation, do we use ranking? Ranking the problem? Yeah. So, uh, like, I, I think as you build the chatbots, you will learn users will not ask only what you think users will ask is yababa really fair 
handle it. It's not even in, the, in your context. You have to handle that. You or you might ask like, you know, uh, has somebody like, I don't know, like completely a different question, you know, is Israel doing something there, you know, and that's called out of context. So the prompt then tells the LLM to not answer for these things. So that's, that's an, you know, the, within the prompt, you have to take care of what should be answered, what should not be answered. So the LLM is smart enough to know, to follow your instruction. So in principle, you will be able to build as you build more chatbots. Yeah. In this training, you will build a couple of chatbots. You will know how to handle, you know, these things like out, out, outside context to not answer outside context only answer within the context and to not be influenced by the prompt itself like for example a user can give you in the chatbot like you know a, a, a ten thousand character text do you receive maybe then you should limit the inputs to not receive more than that and then to not answer also if the question is not about the youtube for these types of youtube data right for the data that you have so you have to limit it that's all prompts so you you tell it in the prompt don't do this do this da, da, da. you know all of that is in the prompt engineering okay all clear thank you okay okay so you know it's one hour past without me talking so now do you want me to talk like that means do you want me to explain still go on i will go on but is there any um you know normally that's how i like it i don't like to just for me to come and say like this is the, 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 the. i think people should read and ask in this in the challenge walks through questions so that we go and you know kind of dissect everything just like the discussion now is much better in my opinion uh, than just if i were just to say like okay you do this you do that you do that right so do you have any more questions Because my my work through go on Kerot and Abdul Hamid uh, as well. All right. Um, so my question is, we are going to use the OpenAI models for this project. So yes. uh, the OpenAI model isn't a free. Uh, we will give you API keys. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it's just we yeah. Sometime today we will will be able to provide. Um, maybe one uh, yeah so we have to figure out how um, to do that but we should be able to give for every group at least one api key. okay any any other question i think these are really the type of questions i like you know simple things you know like things that would would be yeah fun well go on hi, hi again can you hear me? I, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, so for week two, the, the problem that I had was, you know, setting up Redash offline. Uh, so is there a way to do that? Or for this project, since we're using LLMs, we're supposed to use the online version of uh, Redash? I, I think you can. Yeah, you can. Because one of, one of the people that are in your team who has set up can for any screenshot can take that as long as you commit so you have to know in a group work this is your first group work we will check the commit history who committed in the github repository of the group so um and and of course reports we believe we expect you everyone to write their own report even if the data is the same you know whatever there should be similarity in terms of like the outcome but the actual writing the actual blogging should be done by you and as long as you commit you know whether you are using online version and you are committing then it's fine uh okay so one other question sorry yeah uh, how does the group work you know should go like are we supposed to assign each other you know front end yes. for one person and the other and stuff like that exactly or? yeah exactly i mean so you decide you are a team now who are tasked to deliver we try to uh, mix people so that there is at least you know people in that group who knows react and and the back end i think everyone probably 
is Python programmer, so we think everyone knows. But then another person who's who's more on the engineering side, um, who has so if uh, so in principle, you really should meet now, you know, today, and I'm sure already you have met. If if not, arrange a call within yourselves, discuss how to proceed, and plan it as a team, so that you know is more frequent let's say within four or five hours contact time so if someone is doing on the back end for example they should really describe then what they have achieved because you don't want to be late if the, if the you know if there is a challenge so yeah arrange it with the neural service such that one you know assign tasks and conquer it that way um so the bay you know normally it's easier yeah if someone handles the back end if someone handles then the other one is the front end but again, with a lot more contact. So yeah, you have to arrange it. We don't, we only give you guidelines, but how you work together is that if in the team, if the whole team doesn't know one of the, for example, React, then we sh you should tell us so that we try to mix. But yeah, does that answer your question, Fanny? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Great. So I hope you are getting, you know, every week that you are you're feeling more being a team, being an, an actual work than just training. So uh, let's proceed. Okay. So I think it's already we have discussed it that you know this one should describe, you know, the aim of this project is to build a novel chatbot add-on uh, that our team members, this is the company writing, uh, can use to extract insight from multiple read dash dashboards and from connected databases using natural language. It's basically what we discussed. Exactly, it means um, it, they can ask a, a, any question about visualizations that are already in the dashboard or further insights from the data. From the data. So you, sh you should be able to handle that. So that's uh, the part. And if there is not, if not, if something is not clear here, you should ask it. Most people have got it already from their explanation. Radit has got it, the explanation. Brahan, um, Kerod, Fanwell, Plamit, all everybody seems to get at least the core idea. So um, if there is anybody that doesn't get the actual idea of the project, the business need, because the business need is very important. So you should ask uh, and understand. So I think we we wrote it so just for the sake of time i'm not gonna be but it these are the type of tasks that you know the scopes it's summary of visualizations in the current dashboard so visualization is because a yaml file so you have to know that uh, visualizations in redash is just some visual you know yaml files and um, and insight about data written by existing sql queries so this is again you know the sql query generates a data and the data generates a visualization so or you know the, the data already has an insight so that one you should be able to do from uh, from that insight and then auto generate sql queries and visualizations which basically means again you know sql queries are text as well as visualizations are also text now right? because they are just uh, normally others would generate a python code in your case given that redash is actually um redash visualizations are yaml files you don't you know you can generate a python code to generate the yaml file but at the end of the day a visualization is just a yaml file that you generate if it's that means auto generate sql and visualization means you know sql is just a query and the visualization is just a yaml file and dashboards auto generate read dash uh, new dashboards it also means because redash dashboards are also another YAML file, you are actually generating, if you are generating a retouch dashboard, you are also basically generating a YAML file of type called dashboard. You know, the, the dashboard is specified in a certain format. You should basically generate that. Okay. And this should be clearer for you by today. Discuss with your team, discuss in Slack, and such that it's easier. Okay. The data is described here. It's the video uh, from Ten Academy, actually, all videos uh take extracted the statistics of it you know how many views when all that whatever is extracted as well as also uh, transcribed so that you can get a certain you know enough data points you would really then there are a number of skills that that within this project would add into your portfolio and cv 
And that's, of course, uh, analyzing time series data, EDA techniques, uh, as well as also uh, creating intuitive and informative dashboards because you are auto-generating dashboards means you have to now learn more what actually is relevant. So you would actually learn more about intuitive and informative dashboards. And you really are going to be learning about how to edit debug automatically a generated Python or a generated SQL. So should really, uh, you would have, and then you, you are hacking a very big project like uh, Redash to add your own add-on. So you would really learn JavaScript React as well on this one. So these are the type of really uh, skills that you add. And also you are going to be, if you are not already, if you haven't been already, you are going to be also the prompt engineering. You would learn about what it is and crafting some of your prompts um, to be able to do what you want. And you would be also know at least something about OpenAI API and how to call it, how to use it um, in developing plugins and add-ons as well as also you learn about the database management because you have to extract schema and you know, all of that whenever you run a query using a, a worker you know an executor that also you learn so you also are going to probably learn because the the redash uh, salary um, executor is actually a concurrent uh, that means it's uh, a sync it's doing so you would also learn a little bit about running concurrent tasks using salary as well as also uh, deploying all of this into into somewhere so using docker and docker compost so because already redash is a docker and docker compost based installation and then you would also learn where to place a dashboard how to uh, you know craft uh, a visualization uh, automatically so that will also show you and give you some form of ui ux uh, component okay and then in terms of knowledge, definitely a lot more about NLP, that is basically the LLMs and natural language processing. Vector databases, you would learn uh, from the right, from task one, and as well as also machine learning and AI knowledge. And so these are, I mean, the competencies are the things that overall that, that are contributing here, the work. Uh, we haven't updated this one, but it's in principle, in each category, there are some, um, so that's why we should basically, we will remove this one for now because it's not updated. It's not relevant, um, it's not updated. So I think there are many people involved. We just are, these are facilitators, but actually there are many people involved that gives you um, tutorials uh, from different organizations as well and the key dates you have to note the leaderboard and the badge and the group work so this I think everyone now knows what this is so each of you now are gonna work um, this week together to deliver this the business um, you know to the, 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 the business objective so make sure that within your team you have all the resources capacity that means the front end the back end um as well as also just uh, some engineering part so you if if it's really you think like the group is really under resourced in, in that sense the human resource sense then you should contact us um but you know first you have to meet and discuss and plan and that should when i say you have to meet it means after this you know throughout the day and probably if you haven't done already you should do it very quickly and you can submit submissions per group are basically means codes can be submitted as just everybody forks at the end uh, and then submits uh, but reports should be on your um you, you should be writing like even if common things are written together or whatever but the the actual writing, the blog must be in your voice, in your understanding, not about the group's understanding. And also the GitHub submissions, you have to fork them uh, to your repository to actually submit so that it's under your name. Even if we know it's a group, you know, as a group, you may create one new or you may work on one person's uh, GitHub name. But at the end, when you submit, you have to fork it into your repository, into your github account and submit that one so that we know you know whose username we are looking at so um, it's important for, for us that and the late submission has been 
updated because I think, you know, we have been thinking a lot about what it means, late submission. We don't want you to be late, but it's also must, must reflect what really it means at work. At work, when you are submitting late a couple of times, you basically are not going to be accepted. You're going to be saying, okay, you know, thank you. Um, leave the company or, you know, like if you're if you basically not delivering the work, you nobody is going to tolerate you that much. Of course, a couple of times you might be late because of this, but there's no point in being late because as we said, you submit and we just grade, you know, at some point um, to know exactly where you were at that point, to be fair. So in a way, don't think of it like if you had two, three, four hours, it will not be improved. It, it, you know, it, it basically you have to submit just, it's more important to submit it on time than trying to improve. Unless of course you get permission at work. Sometimes you say like, okay, do we have time? Whatever. But in this case, we really want to make sure that you understand what it means when I need some work, if I'm an employer, I need something and then you are late and then the client already is, you know, complains, then I will basically say just thank you, you know, you, 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 we can't work together. So for that reason, we have updated it. Let's submission within the 12 hours or 11 hours window, I think this as described here, uh, these are accepted every, so this is all the submissions after that will be closed. So you cannot submit even that one. So this is not about late submission. This is about submissions that are only accepted. We're gonna close at seven UTC next day. We're gonna close in any way. But we are gonna be looking at the number of frequent late submissions people have exceeding. Uh, so even if it's like one hour late, you know, two hours late, five hours late, the more, if there are, more number of counts of late submissions, we're going to basically going to disqualify you from our list of trainees that we recommend to our partner employers. Because the thing is, then we don't have enough data, we don't have confidence that you would deliver on time. So that basically is my understanding. We, it might be subjected, we are still in active discussion about what it is, but it, it basically means, you know, of course your skill may be your skill, it might not change your skill, but it might change my, our perception of how you will perform, you know, at least not at, in the skill sense, but in the behavioral sense. So we would be very much counting late submissions, as well as also we reward people who are mostly on time. So they will be out of, uh, in a number of weeks, like we'll announce who actually is the most on time person. Instructions, I think they are very clear and I will not go through them, but it's if there is nothing it's not clear that you would be um, you should reach out so um we have analyzed we have asked some people our former alumni to actually to review this do document and to tell us how can we make it easier for people to understand it further and one person suggests uh, who's also going to give a tutorial on tuesday who's working on this area uh, suggested maybe maybe suggest some kind of work plan so that it's easier for them so it's a, a suggestion you don't have to um, you know it's up to you but maybe this is his recommendation maybe breaking it into this component might help thinking of it as basic solution with python and open open AI api with objective python and open api and implementation and then as stage two to enhance nlp with long chain integration and stage three, more advanced data handling with L uh, Llama index. But you can also use, you know, we don't have the choice. You, you can choose whatever, Lang chain, Llama index. It's it's just a suggestion and it's a recommendation. Uh, and also maybe just incorporate vector databases for semantic search from previous questions. It could be, again, you know, this one, if it is useful, use it, but it's it's to simplify if it helps, so, you know, don't be dictated only by that. Even And then the tasks are organized. I think task one is very important because it introduces you to all of the context, the OpenAI tools, Langchain components, Llama index components. Again, the two are more or less similar, Langchain and Llama. They, they just differ on how they handle data and connections. So maybe for your case, Llama index might work better, but 
I'm, you know, Langchain has everything. It's just a huge tool. So may may not be, um, and vector databases, it's again, it's to understand, you might not implement this time. Um, so this is just an understanding. So browse these uh, links. I think this is especially important for you, like as well as also just this one, for example, the experiment quick uh, flow wise AI, you can actually, it's an open source, you can actually um, quickly experiment on a browser without even coding anything. So that's just to give you, to show you your ideas. You know, you can test your ideas on just that. And then I think the paper. So I think re write and understand from task one. Task one will be fundamental to your uh, part, at least in the LLM sense. And task two is tool understanding, data exploration, building data chat add-on we gave you, we are giving you, and it's already associated, some starter code. So that means that if you add that one as instructed in the code, you will be able to see a chat window uh, in your red dash. So that already simplifies for you, you know, all of the, the components. Uh, Rehmet built that, so she will give a tutorial this afternoon and you can ask her anything on that. So we have already just deployed on that. For the backend, it's like the asynchronous version of Flask uh, is called Quartz. And it's very nice for small projects and very quick and very you know um, agile. So maybe you might learn that. So um, it's just the same. If you know Flask, then you know Quart, Quart is actually very, it's just an asynchronous version. Then LLM understanding and integration, automatic dashboard generation. When we say dashboard, you have to know in Redash, it actually means a YAML file or a series of YAML files and then block, right? There will be tutorials. Um, which is now, which I did now, and then also uh, building Redash add-on using React, Rehmet, ask her, get, get really, you know, best out of that. Prompt engineering and uh, tools and ideas will be tomorrow, as well as also building chatbot backend using OpenAI and Quart. I think that one um, we will try. Um, so it's basically there will be a tutorial. There will be also an SQL uh, generation using LLMs, as well as also advanced data analysis, how advanced data analysis on OpenAI works. LIDA is another one from Microsoft and AutoGPT you might know, but Insight Pilot is a recent paper from, um, as well from Microsoft. So just introduction about those and other agents that help, you know, um, generate a SQL or, or codes. So ADA works by generating Python. Uh, and you are, uh, we are asking you to generate um, using SQL, but you know, a Python that actually also queries is something, but within the Redash framework, SQL is the most natural. And the submissions are, we try to explain them a little bit more because it's a lot of work, but all we want is in the entry tomorrow because you had a day. So basically a report on review of open AI technologies basically means like, okay, you understand there are called you know, um, uh, chat completion, um, this and that, you know, just simply the APIs as well as just, you know, uh, there are, if you, if you are able to review about assistance tools and uh, so OpenAI has all plugins or GPTs or, or custom GPTs. So get the language of OpenAI and then also review of just long chain components, you know, what are the basic components? And then also what is vector database useful for or review LLM based AI application, for example, what does it mean? You know, what is the philosophy or a framework of retrieval argumented generations or rugs? I think this is what you would continuously hear everywhere. It's a rug, rug, rug. Rug is just a framework of basically um, chatbot building, right? It's basically just within the era of LLM and review of dashboard server, worker, scheduler, this will help you. So tomorrow, by, when you do that, you know, you have a very, that means on that report, you have a very comprehensive understanding of the project written. And then of course, whatever work you are doing, um, you put it in, in Git and you submit the GitHub link. Finally, Saturday, um, and that you just add everything, um, what you have uh, in the report as well as also in GitHub link. Okay, and there are some references here. We will add more references, so just feel free. So I know I am way over time, but uh, I hope that was useful.
wonderful i think we will share definitely one way or another we'll share the the code uh, either just we zip it and put it uh, but i think there should be it should be the permission should be fixed now okay and i know it's a lot of work but it's also exciting and you are going to do more again and again um, this generative ai project and this is kind of a core because in, in all of them you need engineering building front end building back end and then connector to llm so this is just um yeah good luck and for all questions yeah 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 uh about the interim submission yeah uh on the document that we get it says thursday and no. uh, at the bottom it says tomorrow uh, the interim submission yeah wednesday what is uh so okay in, in in this document at the at the key dates it says Thursday. Uh, the key dates okay so at the beginning uh, the, i understand i think there must have been um, a confusion there so almost always the other one is the over rules if there is this one is just to to bring in the just in the early that the part that this is very very yeah, yeah. very um, no 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 the other one oh yeah exactly uh, yeah. Okay. So that one is correct. So it's Wednesday, it's tomorrow. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Any one very burning question? If not, really get together and crack it. Mubarak. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, so the reports will be as individual or they yes. are in groups? So you can work together. So almost always you can work together, like ideas, whatever, but the writing has to be in your own voice and in your own understanding. Not one, if we find too much, like the same everything, then we don't accept. So it has to be like the ideas are the same, you discussed whatever, but the reporting should be like you should be writing it yourself I imagine like you are writing on your voice and your understanding it should be even if the core idea is the same but the uh, way you will do it will be different so you know your style and everything will, should be reflected there does that answer your question Mubarak? yeah, yeah. okay Rahan. Rahan? Um, I was asking about uh, finally it's up it's one github submission right or it's three GitHubs? No, I mean you could no you could be you could build it in one github all of you contributing but when you submit you should fork it so fork it into your uh, so it, it is the same thing but the link will be slight on your you know the username will be your username when you fork it so for everything else you work the same in one repository but when you submit Work it, and if that's not clear, please ask. Just, but I think it should be clear. Yeah, Abraham. So, uh, for the uh, Wednesday submission GitHub uh, link, are we supposed to submit the group uh, repo, or should we fork that one to fork, fork it? Just, I think you okay. know, I, I, like the reason I, why we want that is that because when we are analyzing, it, we will know exactly your name, and then we will know the commit who committed what. We will be normally analyzing that commit part only. So in a sense, how much you contributed. In a group work, especially it's important. In individual work, we also just, if you know somebody has, you have seen it, some of you already, we have contacted you. If somebody already committed on your repository with a not on your name, then would actually be uh, contacting you or remove it. So in this case, we're just gonna be not considering that. But we'll only consider within that group repository, we will say, you know how much you have contributed because that's the only way that we we know how much you have contributed so if somebody like you know the let's say two people really work so hard and one person didn't work and now that person also submits the link 
and you know how do we know that that you know which two people actually contributed it's by their comments that's why we are almost always telling you to comment and and this is everywhere you know whether you are in google or in any company your comment history is your your basically evidence of your work yeah abraham does that answer your question as well yeah yes thank you wonderful abraham is fine okay good afternoon everyone good afternoon uh, i just wanted to ask uh, uh assuming we split the project into three phases or three uh parts there would yeah. be a front end uh back end and engineering you mentioned previously yeah. could could we just have a highlight like uh rough uh, rough tasks underneath them like for example what the engineering would be just prompt engineering that that would be uh that's what my question is it, it's I, I think you know like i think the split can be very i mean this is just a recommendation but i really you should every group based on their competency should uh, divide it accordingly but for me because the engineering means like running query on a you know on the redash worker right connecting that part and you know okay if i have now an sql how do i run it and what we you know how do i generate more of the yaml files uh, of the dashboard of the query of redash you know and so how do i pack it you know like make it like for example for learning so that llm can generate those yaml files you know that that part is let's say the engineering component of it and the prompt engineering component of it and then on the other part so this is basically you know on how to run once you get a query uh, how to run it as well as you know how to generate using using you know crafting prompts the other component is of course building the back end that facilitates the the kind of like from natural language to um, to a query uh, part or to the you know dashboard visualization part so that that part is building the you know the apis uh, as well as also just together with the prompt engineer being able to experiment and the front end is basically you know how to receive how to pop up where to put it you know all of that of the the react component uh, as well as also when when it's injected once you now generate visualization or a query uh, or a text you know where do you place it and how should that appear like does does it have to reload you know should it be on the side you know that part of it's just the, the front end does that does that answer your question at least give you yeah that, that would give a, a hint thank you okay cool mubarak okay uh, does it has to be an organizational repo or a normal repo with con contributors yeah you you choose we don't we don't um, have any much as i said as long as it's forked and then there your name it doesn't matter for your own sake for simplicity you can create um let's say uh, organization whichever is convenient for you as long as the for us is like the final part is forked and contains your um commits then it's fine okay i hope that was comprehensive so everybody has now at least this good understanding so happy coding and happy hacking thanks everyone bye